like it. Okay. Unus. Everybody's we're ready? We're yeah, ready. we're okay. ready. So, welcome to the first meeting of 2018. Good wishes for everybody for the new year. Um, the, I want to start, before we start reading the Go Show, does anybody know what the, the significance of tonight's Go Show is? Um, Do you know what the name of tonight's Go Show is without me showing you or asking you? Telling you? It's Letter to Misawa. Do you understand what the significance of this Go Show is? Okay, this is really about... Um, uh, how to perceive the Daishonin's encouragement and teaching from the standpoint of those events that occurred prior to Sato Island and those occur events that occurred after Sato Island. Okay? And I'll get into that in a minute, but the, the bottom line is that um, I wanted to start by going to the dictionary and asking, does anybody know what the four debts of gratitude are toward? Who are the four debts of gratitude Toward, you remember? It's 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 real easy actually. It's it's the three virtues: parent, teacher, and sovereign, right? Yeah, yeah. It goes without saying. And then the, the three treasures of Buddhism, right? Mm -hmm. So let me just read the four debts of gratitude: the debts owed to one's parents, to all living beings, to one's sovereign, and to the three treasures of Buddhism. These four. Pardon me. This is up from the dictionary, Buddhist dictionary, page two one five. It's under four debts of gratitude. These four are set forth in the contemplation of the Mind Ground Sutra. The definition of the four debts of gratitude varies somewhat according to the source. The meditation on the correct teaching sutra defines them as debts owed to one's father, to one's mother, to the thus come one or Buddha, and to the teacher of the law. In his work, The Four Debts of Gratitude, Nichiren refers to the four debts of gratitude described in the contemplation on the Mind Ground Sutra. In On Repaying Debts of Gratitude, he lists the four debts of gratitude as he as the debts owed to one's father and mother, to one's teacher, to the three treasures, and to one's sovereign. Okay? Now, but what are the three treasures of Buddhism? Does anybody know? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. What? Teacher. Well, Specifically, the law, the, the law, law. The, law. Mm -hmm. the Buddha, the Buddha. Okay, uh -huh. and everybody that supports that process, yeah. the yeah, group yeah. of believe, the sangha, sangha or whatever, however it's pronounced, mm -hmm. is the three things that all Buddhists, that would include all of us, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Should revere and serve. They are the Buddha, the law, the Buddhist teachings, and the Buddhist order, community of believers. In Sanskrit, they are known as the Buddha. Dharma and Sangha. Uh, the Buddha is one who has awakened to the truth of life in the universe. That would be all of us that achieve actualization in the sun's in, right? Mm -hmm. The Dharma our law means the teachings that the Buddha expounds in order to lead all people to enlightenment. That would be Namya Hodengekyo mm -hmm. at this point in time, right? The Sangha or Buddhist order is the group of persons who practice the Buddhist teachings, preserve the law, spread it, and transmit it to future generations. The three treasures are endowed with the power to free people from all sufferings and lead them to enlightenment. Traditionally, upon becoming a Buddhist, one vowed to believe in and devote oneself to these three treasures. Okay, so let's get into the Gosho itself, a uh, letter to Misawa. And uh, I'll read the Gosho first, starting with the background. Background on page 898 of... Uh, Volume 1. Volume 1. 898. 898. Mm -hmm. Background. Letter to Misawa. Eight. Written in the fourth year of Kenji. This letter is also referred to as before and after Sato because it makes a clear distinction between the teachings the Daishonin expounded before his exile to Sato and those during and after his Sato exile. He compares the former to the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings which Shakyamuni preached as an expedient to lead his disciples to the Lotus Sutra. So what's he basically saying in that? What? He's the first come one. Huh? 
Yeah, but what is what what is he basically saying in making the distinction that all of his teachings prior to uh, uh, Tatsunokuchi, frankly, which was the the reason he went to Sato, right? That was the event that triggered all this, and actually showed him actual proof of his Buddhahood. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and from that point on. He quit talking so much about Shakyamuni, Lord of Teachings, mm -hmm. the, the, safe, the mm -hmm. safe thing to say, mm -hmm. and started to evoke mm -hmm. the truth of his own life and mm -hmm. his own advent and his own purpose and his own Buddhahood. Do you understand? Yeah. So he's, in saying that then, he's saying what? He's saying that everything that I taught prior to Tatsunakuchi should be considered to be the equivalent of pre-Lotus Sutra teachings, which is to say what? Expedient means. They're expedient means. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when he was talking about all those kinds of things, mm -hmm. he wasn't really being completely straightforward and direct mm -hmm. in the truth of what they, they actually were because his life had not yet reflected something that would allow him to make that statement. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. He says, and okay, he compares the former to the pre Lotus Sutra teachings, which Shakyamuni preached as an expedient to lead his disciples to the Lotus Sutra. Concerning his true teaching, the Daishonin says, I secretly conveyed my teachings to my disciples from the province of Sado. Quoting from the uh, Buddha's words, he refers to the teaching simply as this great law. More precisely, this teaching was explained in two of his most important writings, the opening of the eyes and the object of devotion for observing the mind, mm -hmm. right? Which he wrote where? On Sado Island. On Sado Island, mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. Tatsunokuchi, okay? Mm -hmm. The recipient of this letter is generally believed to be Misawa Kojiro, a lay follower of the Daishonin who was the lord of Misawa in uh, Fuji district of Suruga province, through some, though some consider it to be given to... Kojiro's grandson, Masahiro. Misawa appears to have kept his distance from the Daishonin for fear of antagonizing and arousing the suspicions of the Kamakura Shogunate. But the Daishonin expresses understanding of his position as the lord of a manor responsible for a fief, family, and retainers, and kindly encourages him. Okay? Everybody's ready? I'm going to start reading the, the, the whole Gosho. Page 894. Starts, letter to Misawa. Please tell the people of Saruga that they should unite firmly in faith. I have received your offerings of a hundred mandarin oranges, kelp, labor, dark green seawood, seaweed, and other produce that you took the trouble to send me in this remote mountainous place. I have also received the quilted robe made by the lay nun Utsubusa. I have carefully examined the points you raised in your letter, and I understand. Although the people who study Buddhism outnumber the dust particles of the land. Those who actually become Buddhas are fewer than the specks of dirt that can be placed on a fingernail. That's from the Nirvana Sutra. This, this is the world, this, the world honored one of great enlightenment clearly states in the Nirvana Sutra, sorry. On reading it, I wondered why it should be so difficult. But after some thought, I realized that indeed it must be so. Although people study Buddhism it is difficult for them to practice it correctly, either because of the ignorance of their minds or because even though they are wise, they fail to realize that they are being mis misled by their teachers. So, you know, uh, again, what this is, is actually saying is that you can study Buddhism, mm -hmm. but if you don't practice it correctly, mm -hmm. that study is not going to lead to anything. All right? Mm -hmm. So he's saying... Moreover, and, and, and how do you learn how to practice correctly is by just by encountering a correct teacher. Yes. Mm. Okay? The doctrine's already there, but you need somebody to explain it to you from the appropriate perspective so that you can actualize the wisdom that already exists inside your life. Again, this isn't a process of learning everything from zero. This is really a reawakening of the wisdom that already exists inside of you. He says, continuing on page 894. Moreover, even though one may encounter a wise teacher and the true sutra, the Lotus Sutra, and thereby embrace the correct teaching, when one resolves to break free from the sufferings of birth and death and attain Buddhahood, one will inevitably encounter seven grave matters known as the three obstacles and four devils, just as surely as a shadow follows the body and clouds accompany rain. 
even if you should manage to overcome the first six. If you are defeated by the seventh, you will not be able to become a Buddha. Let us leave the first six for now. Let me leave the first six for now. The seventh is caused by the devil king of the sixth heaven. When an ordinary person of the latter age is ready to attain Buddhahood, having realized the essence of all the sacred teachings of the Buddha's lifetime and understood the heart of the important teachings set forth in great concentration and insight, this devil is greatly surprised. He says to himself, this is most vexing. If I allow this person to remain in my domain, he will not only free himself from the sufferings of birth and death, but he will lead others to enlightenment as well. Moreover, he may take over my realm and change it into a pure land. What shall I do? The devil king then summons all of his underlings from th the threefold world of desire, form, and formlessness and tells them, each of you now go and harass that votary according to your respective skills. If you should fail to make him abandon his Buddhist practice, then enter into the minds of his disciples, lay supporters, and the people of his land, and thus try to persuade or threaten him. If these attempts are also unsuccessful, I myself will go down and possess the mind and body of his sovereign to persecute that votary. Together, how can we fail to prevent him from attaining Buddhahood? So what did he just talk, what did he just say there though? What, what, is the, what is this, when an ordinary person of the latter age is ready to attain Buddhahood, what does that mean? That means any of us mm -hmm. that decide we're going to devote ourselves to faith and practice and persevere to the last moment of our life, we take the vow, we uphold the vow, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We make the determination to become Buddhas in our present form, even if we don't overtly believe that. Mm -hmm. That'll be a process that will become clear. But the teaching says that we can and we will, and so therefore we embark on that path. Mm -hmm. I mean, I embarked on the path to attain Buddhahood when I started practicing, right? That's, I mean, that's, that's why I started practicing, okay? He's saying, when an ordinary person of the latter age is ready to attain Buddhahood, having realized the essence of all the sacred teachings of the Buddha's lifetime, what does that basically say? Having realized the essence of all the sacred teachings of the Buddha's lifetime, what is that? Nam myoho renge kyo is the, the understanding of the law and understood the heart of the important teachings set forth in great concentration and insight. Okay? You utilize Tentai's clarification for the sake of understanding the depth of the message there. It's not the stuff that's on the surface. Most of Tentai's teaching is depth of below, mm -hmm. below the surface mm -hmm. literal meaning, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The devil is greatly surprised, and then the devil freaks out because he's afraid that such a Buddha could actually turn the Sahe world into a Buddha land, right? So he says that this devil, this king devil then, really freaks out about this issue and tries to provide every obstacle available to defeat the individual that has decided to embark upon the path to Anatara Samyak Sambodai. And why? Why is one person such a threat? Because anybody that does that can change the world. Can change the world. Good, good answer, my brother. That's the <laughs> correct answer. I Nitrin, continuing on page eight ninety five. So, so when you're faced with the three obstacles and the four devils, there's a good reason because the power of your life is a scary thing for fundamental darkness. All right? I, Nietzsche, have long been aware of all this and therefore know how difficult it is for an ordinary person of a latter age to become a Buddha in this lifetime. The sutras describe in many places how Shakyamuni Buddha attained enlightenment and the obstacles he suffered because of the devil king of the sixth heaven seem absolutely unbearable. The fiendish acts of Devadatta and, the, and of King Ajashatru were due solely to the workings of that devil. The Lotus Sutra says, since hatred and jealousy toward the Sutra abound even when the thus come one is in the world, how much more so will this be after his passing? How much more will this be so after his passing? An ordinary person like Nietzsche would not be able to bear any of the tribulations of the world-honored one of great enlightenment. Uh, that uh, the, the, that the, uh, uh, pardon me, 
An ordinary person like Nietzsche would not be able to bear any of the tribulations the world honored one of great enlightenment underwent for a single day or even a single moment, let alone all the various persecutions that befell him during a period of 50 years or more. Moreover, it is taught that in the latter age, persecutions will be 100,000, 10,000 million times greater than those in the Buddha's lifetime. I wondered how I could possibly withstand them. Okay? But again, understand that the perspective that he just stated there, he understood all that prior to Tatsunokuchi. Okay? He was wondering, how am I going to withstand these greater persecutions that are 100 million more times more difficult than that of the Buddha, right? So he's saying, moreover, it is taught that in the latter age, persecutions will be 100,000, 10,000 million times greater than those in the Buddha's lifetime. I wondered how I could possibly withstand them. A sage, however is said to be capable of predicting what will occur in the future. With regard to the three existences, an understanding of the future is the mark of a true save. sage. I not, may not be a sage, but I have for some time known that Japan would in our day bring ruin upon itself because of its attachment to erroneous teachings. Mm -hmm. I knew that if I dared to say this openly, then surely I must be the votary of the Lotus Sutra, who the Buddha prophesied would appear in the future age that he was describing when he said, how much more so, how much more will this be so after his passing? So he's making a declarative there, isn't he? He's saying, I am the Buddha, I am the votary of the Lotus Sutra in the latter day of the law. I was prophesied, my advent was prophesied by Shakyamuni. And I am now fulfilling that prophecy. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But if, though knowing what the future holds, I were to remain silent, I would be condemned to be born a mute or a stutterer in lifetime after lifetime. I myself would become a great enemy of Shakyamuni Buddha, the Lord of Teachings, and a traitor to the rule of Japan. After death, I would fall into the great citadel of hell of incessant suffering. For years, therefore, I have continually admonished myself that even though I might lack food or cloth, clothing, or be rebuked by my parents, brothers, teachers, teacher and colleagues, or be persecuted by the ruler and all the people, if I were going to waver even in the slightest on that account, I would have done better never to have spoken out in the first place. So does everybody understand what he's just qualifying there? Again, there's no separation between his, li his life and yours. He's the trailblazer for the same path you're going to follow. Okay? So what did he just qualify there? He's basically saying if you're going to decide to take the path and commit your, your life and your, the purpose of your life toward the attainment of Buddhahood in this lifetime... If you're not prepared to deal with the three obstacles and the four devils that will absolutely surely occur in that process, don't even go there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't even go there. You're better off not to go there because you're going to slander the law if you go there and you retreat. So he's basically telling you up front, be prepared for the difficulty that awaits you and do not shrink or shirk any of the responsibility that you've given yourself in pursuing that goal. Mm. Okay, do you understand? Mm. He's saying, I have continually admonished myself that even though I might lack food or clothing or be rebuked by my parents, brothers, mm. teacher, and colleagues or be mm. persecuted by the ruler and all the people, if I were going to waver even the slightest on that account, I would have, been, I would have, done, uh, pardon me, I would have done better never to have spoken out in the first place. So he's making sure that you understand, even though it's a very valiant cause to decide you want to attain Buddhahood in this lifetime, if you then turn your back on the difficulty that you encounter as a result of that, when you know in advance that that's what awaits you if you take that path, then you would probably be better served to wait until your faith is stronger before you decide to embark on that path. And those of you that have decided that your faith is what it is, I'm going. Don't turn back. Don't be afraid. Don't be defeated. Have faith. You will always achieve Anottara Samyak Sambodai, Supreme Perfect Enlightenment, in this lifetime. All right? He says, During the past countless kalpas, I may have met the Lotus Sutra several times and aroused the aspiration for enlightenment. 
However, while I may have been able to bear one or two difficulties, I must have given up when faced with a succession of great obstacles. In this life, I knew that if I were truly resolved to withstand the harshest trials, then I must speak out. This I did, and I encountered great persecutions, one after another, just as the sutra predicts. Mm -hmm. So again, if you are a true teacher, there are going to be people that hate you for that. There are going to be people that slander you for that. There are going to be people that abuse you for that. Don't expect parades and confetti raining down because you've become a true teacher and you're there to try and help everybody out. Mm -hmm. It's actually going to bring forth the devilish function in others because the devil can't get to you. The devil gets to those around you to try and dissuade you and cre create obstacles that are so difficult that you give up. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you, when you encounter those things in truth, I have, you can't give up. You've got to, even though it almost seems counterintuitive, you've got to give the opportunity for the law to prove itself. This is called what? Faith. Faith. Mm -hmm. My resolution is now immovable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Determined to, and where is he writing? He's, he's writing this, you know, at, at, at Sado, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. My resolution is now immovable. Determined to endure any hardship, I have fulfilled the Buddhist prediction, and I have not the slightest doubt. Now I am living here in this mountain forest. Now this is after he's already returned. Even if you should abandon your faith in the Lotus Sutra, how, I could, how could I regard as strangers the people who, if only for a day or even a moment, have helped me survive? Never have I cared for what happens to me personally. I promise that no matter what might befall me, I would maintain my faith without regressing. And if I became a Buddha, I would lead all of you to enlightenment. You have less knowledge of Buddhism than I, and moreover, you are lay believers with lands, wives, children and retainers. Therefore, it may be extremely difficult for you to sustain your faith throughout life. This is why I have always told you that because of your position, it would be better to feign ignorance of this teaching. No matter what may happen in the future, be assured that I will never forsake or neglect you. So what's he basically saying there? First of all, no, a Buddha not. never forgets their debt of gratitude to, to everything. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter that the debt. Okay, what, what, if you, based on faith, and based on an understanding of this teaching, you understand that when you, when you encounter the three obstacles and the four devils, mm -hmm. okay, and they emanate from others, right? The three obstacles and those four devils are all things that would seem to be at the moment that you that you you encounter them as things outside of you, right? Yeah. But he's saying basically that he that you you must understand that you never hold that against those individuals. You never hate those people that persecute you. You never slander those people that persecute you. You understand that they are a function of your devilish karma. Okay, they're a reflection of your path toward enlightenment. It, don't hold it against it. Mm -hmm. All right, and for throughout your life, you should always reflect and appreciate them for the various things that, if you give it some thought, you'll have a reason to appreciate them for. In some instances, it will be that if they hadn't done that shitty, terrible thing, you would have never grown as a result. And achieve the understanding that occurred as a result of the victory that you achieved because you had to achieve that victory because that was the obstacle you had to get past to continue. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So he's saying, he's saying, um, and then he's saying that basically he understands those that cannot withstand that difficulty. Mm -hmm. All right? He does not call them then bad people. Mm -hmm. As for my teachings, Regard those before my exile to the province of Sado as equivalent to the Buddha's pre-Lotus Sutra teachings. I had thought that if the ruler of this country desired to govern well, he would summon the priests of the True Word School for an open debate with me, and on that occasion I would reveal a matter of supreme, truly supreme importance. 
Before my exile, I withheld this even from my disciples for fear that if I should tell them, even in confidence, they might inadvertently disclose it to the true word priests and would then, who would then avoid the debate. This is why I refrained from revealing it uh, to each one of you as well. And what he's referring to is the teaching of, of, of the Buddhism of the Selling that's revealed in the uh, opening of the eyes and the observation uh, of, the, uh, 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 the, of the mind. Okay. I, I withstand this even before my... I was withheld this even... Uh, pardon me, from my disciples for fear if I should tell them even in confidence they might inadvertently disclose it to the true word priests who would then avoid the debate. This is why I refrain from revealing it to each one of you as well. Then on the uh, night of the twelfth day of the ninth month of the eighth year of Brene, I was verily nearly de uh, beheaded at Tassinakuchi. From that time I felt pity for my followers because I had not yet revealed this true teaching to any of them. Mm. All right? With this in mind, that's why the opening of the eyes and, and mm -hmm. the object of the devotion for the observation of the mind are such important writings, mm -hmm. right? He said, I, uh, with this in mind, I secretly conveyed my teachings, those two goshos, mm -hmm. to my disciples from the province of Sado, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. After the Buddha's passing, great scholars and teachers such as Mahakashayapa, Ananda, Negajuna, Vasubandhu, Tiantai, Myolo, Dengyo, and Gishi knew this teaching, but kept it in their hearts and did not express it in words. The reason was that the Buddha had forbidden them to spread it, stating, after my passing, this great law should not be revealed until the latter day of the law arrives. I may not be an envoy, an envoy sent by the Buddha, but my appearance in this world coincides with the age of the latter day. Moreover, quite unexpectedly, I came to realize this teaching, which I now expound to prepare the way for a sage. Now, what's he basically saying there? <coughs> Moreover, quite unexpectedly, unexpect I came to realize this teaching of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo mm -hmm. and the Buddhism of the Sewing, mm -hmm. okay, which I now expound to prepare the way for a sage. Who is that sage? He's saying... He's talking about bodhisattva superior practices because that's who's supposedly going to spread this teaching. He's not out there bodaciously saying, I am bodhisattva superior practices. Mm -hmm. But what he's basically doing is fulfilling the function of bodhisattva superior practices. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ultimately they're, they're the same function. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. from, the, from what had been prophesied and who would spread it and who actually... Uh, occurred and, 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 and actualized it. With the appearance of this teaching, all the teachings advocated by the scholars and teachers of Buddhism during the former and middle days of the law will be stars like stars after sunrise or an awkward apprentice beside a skilled craftsman. Do you understand what he's saying there then? He's saying... After I have expounded Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, the great pure law, and my teaching of the Buddhism of sowing, and in the uh, object of devotion for the observation of the mind, he qualifies the Buddhism of the sowing versus the Buddhism of the harvest, right? Mm. He says, that was his, this is mine, mm. right? Yeah. So he qualifies, I got a different teaching. It, my teaching is for the latter day of the law, mm. okay? And what he's saying, this teaching for the latter day of the law is of such great magnitude that it eclipses all of the teachings that preceded it, okay, from the former and the middle days. So everything Tintai said is a star after the sun comes up. Everything Dingyo says, everything uh, Myolo says, okay, everything that Nagarjuna said, everything that Vasubandhu said, everything that all those great teachers of the Fuji lineage said, are like stars after the sun has risen. They're there, they're still stars, but in the bright sunlight of the sun, they disappear. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All right. Like, sun, like stars after sunrise or an awkward apprentice beside a skilled craftsman, it is stated that once this teaching is revealed in this era, the Buddha images as well as the priests of the temples built in the former and middle days will lose all their power to benefit people 
and only this great teaching will spread throughout the entire land of Jampavipa. Since all of you have a bond with this teaching, you should feel reassured. Okay, so he's saying, don't worry about those other teachings. At this point in time, you've got a relationship with the correct teaching for the latter day of the law. That's all you should be worried about. Mm -hmm. Take my word for it. I'm the Buddha of the latter day of the law. Okay, that's why you're my disciple. Okay, that's why you've appeared at this time. Usu, uh, Usubusa came a long distance to visit me to, despite her advanced age, but since I was told that it was merely a casual visit on her way back from the shrine to the god of her ancestors, I would not see her, although I pitied her greatly. Had I permitted her to see me, I would have been allowing her to commit slander against the Lotus Sutra. Does everybody understand that? The reason is that all gods are subjects and the Lotus Sutra is their Lord. It is against even the code of society to visit one's Lord on the way back from calling on one of his subjects. Moreover, Usabusa is a lay nun and should have the Buddha foremost in mind. Because she made this and other mistakes as well, I refused to see her. She was not the only one, however. I refused to see many others who stopped by to visit me on their return from the hot springs resort of Shimobe. Utsubusa is the same age as my, that my parents would be. I feel deeply sorry to have disappointed her, but I want her to understand this point. So what's he conveying there? I've said this before. Okay? This is to com this, he's, he's protecting her from committing slander. Mm -hmm. okay? Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the, the same principle as this is why we have President Makaguchi, President Toda, and President Ikeda mentioned in Gongyo. A lot of people that hate the Soka Gakkai mm. or that hate Daisaku Ikeda mm. will immediately go to, they added that, that was incorrect, they didn't have a right to add that. Mm -hmm. Okay? But why did they modify the prayer to include Makaguchi, Toda, and Ikeda? Because generally speaking, if you're reading that prayer, you have encountered the law of nam myoho renge through the efforts and teaching of the Soka Gakkai mm -hmm. as the vehicle that propagated it throughout the world, right? right. Mm -hmm. And then, based on this sense of appreciation, this debt of gratitude, mm -hmm. do you understand? This has to be expressed by a practitioner, even if they don't have the wisdom to understand to do that. Okay? So they don't slander. They don't slander. That's the reason it's there, so they don't slander. That's it. It's not to make, ah, the first three presidents are badasses, man. We got to remember them forever. No. It's because they were individuals that without their contribution because of the steps they fomented in their own lives through their own suffering. Don't forget what Tanessa Buro Makaguchi had to go through. Don't forget what Jose Toda had to go through. And trust me, you have no clue about how much President Ikeda has had to go through mm -hmm. in order to accomplish what's been accomplished for the sake of us. I wouldn't be able to be reading you this ghost show in English. Okay? I would be completely without the capacity to teach anybody. I'd only be able to hear stuff in Jap that some Japanese guy told me. Okay? Without the Soka Gakkai, this teaching wouldn't have been translated into Spanish, into French, into everything else that you can imagine, right? Mm -hmm. And spread throughout the world, 192 co countries, 12 million believers. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. That's this that's the premise that he's discussing. If you're just coming back from the hot springs and you want to just stop by to chat or say hi, you'll be slandering without understanding. You have every good intention to stop by and say hi, but you don't understand who I really am. And you don't understand the, what I'm really teaching is of such importance that if you take it casually or you think that I'm just another guy, 
you'll be slandering without realizing it. That's why he doesn't let them come to see him. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. He said, and it makes me feel terrible mm -hmm. because I know they don't understand why I say no, but I must say no because they're seeking me in the wrong way. They're seeking me out of their convenience rather than a pursuit to understand the true teaching. Mm -hmm. Does everybody understand that now? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he says, after you came here to see me the year before last, bottom of page 896, I received word, true or not, I do not know, that you were ill. And I wanted to send a messenger to inquire after you. But my disciples said that as much as they understood how I felt, they advised against it as I might embarrass you. Therefore, I abandoned the idea, acknowledging that such is the way of the world. I thought that if you were really ill, you would inform me through a messenger, since you have always been sincere and faithful. I did not hear from you, however, so I myself deliberately refrained from inquiring after you, although I have been anxious about you all this mm -hmm. time. Impermanence is the way of all things. But last year and this year, the world has seen such great turmoil that I wondered if I could ever see you again. Just when I was longing to hear from you, your letter arrived. Nothing could have given me greater pleasure. Please tell the lay nun, Usubusa, about all that I have written here. In other words, please explain to her why I didn't see her. Mm -hmm. Okay, that it was not anything personal. Okay, but she should understand. Since she's pursuing Buddhism, she should understand what I've explained to, here, mm -hmm. to you here. Please make sure she understands now. All right? I would like to further... I would like to explain further about my teaching, but this letter is already too long. Earlier I mentioned the Zen, Nimbutsu, and Precept schools, but of the many schools of Buddhism, the true word is the very teaching that brought ruin upon Japan and will destroy it upon China and will destroy Japan as well. Not only were six priests, the Tripitaka masters, Shan Wu Wei, uh, uh, Ching, Kang Chi and Pukung and the great teachers Kobo, Jikaku, and Chisho confused as to the relative superiority of the Lotus Sutra and the three true word sutras such as the Mihavra Chana. But the first three Tripitaka masters also made objects of devotion representing the two diamond and womb realms and misled people to believe that these mandalas had originated in India. Do you understand what he's saying there? Uh, misleading people. Being so deceived, the three great uh, the these the three great teachers learned the true word doctrines, brought them to Japan, and spread them throughout the land to everyone, to everyone from down from the ruler on down to the common people. Emperor Suang Tsung of China lost his empire because of the true world do, the true word doctrines, and Japan is steadily declining. The retired emperor of Oki, who served as the 82nd emperor, was robbed of his power by the Kamakura government, despite great Bodhisattva Hachiman's oath to protect 100 successive rulers. This misfortune was solely the, resort, the result of prayers offered by eminent priests who followed the three great teachers mentioned above on behalf of the imperial court. These prayers rebounded upon the originator. What's he basically talking about here? Why is true word so bad? Does anybody know? Why is true word? Why does he pick on these guys? Why does he pick on Zen and true word and Nimbutsu and precepts? Or dictums calling them out. Saying they're bad stuff. First of all, it's the latter day of the law, and all of their teachings are no longer the cor correct to be propagated. Yes. Secondly, specifically with true word, they stole Ichin and Sanzen from the teachings of Tentai and inserted it into their school's doctrine. Mm -hmm. Okay? Also, there was originally, um, you know, uh, again, when he talks about uh, these uh, guys, hang on, where are they by name? Yeah. Here, Kobo, uh, Kobo, Jikaku, and Chisho. Mm. These are great true root. Okay, Jikaku and Chisho, who, who were they? Those were actually uh, Mount Hei. Those were actually from Dingyo's original school. Mm. They're the ones that mixed up 
Jikaku was the one that led the true word teachings into Mount Hei and adulterated it being a strictly lotus school to adopting the true word. All right, And then on top of that, they lied to the people that they explained this and said that their object of devotion that they created originated in India when they had made it up. Mm -hmm. Okay, Couldn't have possibly originated in India. The true word uh, teaching doesn't come from India. It comes from China. Okay, So he says, he says uh, the, these prayers rebounded a, upon the originator. What does that mean? When you chant for, this can also happen to you, by the way. Mm -hmm. When you chant for bad things to happen to people, mm -hmm. those things will occur to you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. Mm -hmm. When you try to use the, the, the Gohonzon or Nam Yoho Rengekyo <laughs> as weapons, mm -hmm. the oh. result will be very, very clearly shown to you and to all others that might have observed you that this is an incorrect way to pursue prayer. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. We don't ever try to retaliate the Daishonin's already stated that he understands all of these people that might have not had the courage and the, the, the wisdom to continue, okay? And that he'll never, ever hold anything against them no matter what they do, right? Because at a point in time, he had great reason to give them respect and appreciation, and he holds that dear to his heart for his whole life. He says, because the Kamakura Shogunate attacked this evil doctrine and evil and the evil men who espoused it, it might have ruled our land for 18 generations more until its 100th ruler, in accordance with the oath of the great Bodhisattva Hachiman. However, it has now turned to the men of the same evil doctrine it once opposed. Therefore, as Japan no longer has a ruler worthy of protection, Brahma, Chakra, and the gods of the sun and the moon and the four heavenly kings have reached a decision and ordered a foreign country to threaten Japan. They have also dispatched the votary of the Lotus Sutra as their envoy. The ruler, however, does not heed his warnings. On the contrary, he sides with the priests, thus creating chaos in both the secular realm of government and the religious realm of Buddhism. Now, why, what is he again knocking here? When, when the, when the um, Mongols said that they were going to come and invade, who did the imperial court turn to for prayers to save the nation? What's the biggest temple in Japan at the time? Hey, hey, you know, Dingyo. Dingyo. Right? And what has it gone? And, and when Dingyo founded it and the ordination platform that he founded there, what was for precept was to the ordination platform was to establish the precepts, right, mm. for the attainment of of of, for, of, for, of the correct teaching, right? And then what happened? His successors adulterated it and added the true word teachings. And then what did they tell the emperor imperial court? Why did Jikaku say, "Hey, this is cool"? Why did Kobo say, "You know, no one is going to attain Buddhahood through the Lotus Sutra"? What was cool about true word? Mudras. Secret oh. stuff. Okay? Secret stuff that you couldn't know unless you were part of the mm -hmm. team, right? Mm -hmm. That could only be revealed. All right? So, he says, as a result, he has become a... On the contrary, he sides with the priest. So the ruler has now taken on incorrect teaching... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now asking true word to pray for the country. The Daishonin has been the first one to prophesize this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And instead of turning him to pray for the country, he, the, the imperial court has turned to the true word priests. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why he's saying this is all going to go badly. All right? Uh, as a result, he has become a formidable enemy of the Lotus Sutra. He's become a formidable enemy of the Lotus Sutra. Why? Because he's adulterated the teaching of the Lotus Sutra that says, you know, all those were expedient means. Mm -hmm. All right? And as his slander has long continued, this country is on the verge of ruin. Mm -hmm. Today's epidemic is no less than, an, less than a harbinger of a great war that, uh, that is to come. How pitiful, how tragic. Nietzsche, letter to Masawa. Okay, so let's go on to President Ikeda's lecture on page 165 and get it started here. We won't read the Gosho in the beginning because I already read the whole Gosho. We're going to start on page 167.
You ready? Yes. All right, he says, my mentor, second Soka Gakkai president, Jose Toda, often used to remark, when it comes to battling serious karma and undergoing our human revolution, huge obstacles and hardships can in fact serve as a powerful impetus propelling, propelling us forward. Just ambling along a level road won't help us change our karma. The greater the difficulties and challenges we encounter, the greater the life state we can develop. Therefore, we mustn't be intimidated by the three obstacles and four devils. That is, the obstacles and hindrances that invariably arise in the course of our Buddhist practice. Our wisdom, derived from faith, allows us to see through such phenomena, recognizing them for what they are, based on Nichiren Daishonin's teachings and regarding their occurrence as an opportunity to change our karma. We can then stand up with even greater conviction and courage, chanting nam myoho renge with unwavering resolve and forging ahead, uh, uh, boldly ahead. Does everybody understand what he just said there? Yes. What did he say? Um, we can change our karma. He's saying basically we can utilize the three obstacles and the four devils mm -hmm. as propellants rather than deterrence to utilize for bringing forth our life condition and the innate wisdom that already exists within us, mm -hmm. right? To be Buddhas in our present form, okay? He's saying, Nichiren writes, the three obstacles and four devils will invariably appear. So if they're going to invariably appear, what's the best thing you can do? Change. To use them positively mm -hmm. then rather, rather than to view and, and allow them to affect you negatively. Okay? And the wise will rejoice while the foolish will retreat. Why do the wise rejoice? Because bad shit's about to happen and they like that? No. No. Why? Because they have the wisdom. They have the wisdom to perceive that these are all things that are occurring because they're correctly on the path to Buddhahood. Mm -hmm. And the foolish will go, I'm already practicing Buddhism. Why is bad stuff happening to me? Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. He says, either we advance or we retreat. There is no middle ground. So do you understand what he's saying there, though? Mm -hmm. It's always advance. You can never retreat. Even, yeah. if you, even, if you, even if you are holding on, you can't go backwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Either we cringe in fear and surrender to the devilish functions, the negativity in our own lives or in the lives of others, or we challenge this negativity and deepen our conviction and faith. This difference in resolve determines everything. Why? <clears throat> because one way you're going to become the Buddha, and another way you're not. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. <clears throat> this difference in resolve determines everything. Are you going to stand up and defeat Santoshima? Are you going to be defeated by Santoshima? Buddhism is win or lose. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's what he's talking about, win or lose. Nichiren himself faced the major ordeals of the Tatsunokuchi persecution and the Sato exile with supreme confidence and composure. Through battling great hardships, individuals can establish an inner state of indestructible happiness, and their example can open the way for countless others to similarly free themselves from suffering. The essence of devilish functions is to deprive people of their benefit and even their lives. This is achieved through undermining people's resolve. This is achieved through getting them to quit. This is achieved through getting them to become confused. This is achieved through beginning, uh, uh, by uh, getting them to become discouraged, by getting them to become tired. This is all an issue of resolve. This is all about whether or not you live up to the vow or not, right? You don't casually take the vow, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, so... This is achieved through undermining people's resolve. They're talking about undermining your resolve to fulfill the vow to attain Buddhahood in your present form and achieve Kosen Rufu through the actions of your own life. 
Such functions work to destroy people's desire to seek and continue advancing on the path of attaining Buddhahood. Because it's hard. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. Consequently, people who persevere in faith and stay firmly committed to moving forward on this path will remain impervious to attacks by these negative functions. Developing such inner strength is the true purpose of our Buddhist practice. So what is the purpose of our practice? To be stronger. To be stronger, but, but of course. But how do we become stronger? Fighting. With the really short time. Right, we become... Answering. Right, by actually Positive. overcoming. <laughs> people by persevering in faith. And staying firmly committed to moving forward on this path, no matter what, become impervious to these attacks by devilish functions. Why? Because they have the faith and wisdom to perceive them correctly. And the Daishonis teaching is that you will invariably encounter them. And the whole deal is whether or not you win or lose in that battle. Mm. All right? In the writing we are studying this time. So is this all about, is this about being a member of the Soka Gakkai and going to meetings once no. or twice or three times a month? Mm. No, this is about achieving Buddhahood in your present form. Mm. This is about being the Buddha in this lifetime. In the writing we are studying this time, letter to Masawa, Nichiren urges his followers to continue striving together with him, undaunted by any circumstance. For Kosen Rufu, a struggle between the Buddha nature and the negativity inherent in life. Nichiren urges his followers conti to continue striving together with him, undaunted by any circumstance for what? The purpose of what? Propagating the way. Right. Kosen Rufu, widespread propagation. Mm -hmm. A struggle between the Buddha nature, mm -hmm. because we can only do that if we bring it forth, and the negativity inherent in life. All those aspects that will, the three de obstacles and the four devils, those aspects that will try and keep us from achieving that. July, when this month was originally published, marks the month in which the first three Soka Gakkai presidents, united by the bonds of mentor and disciple in faith, stood up to the devilish nature of power. Through Nietzsche's writing, let us, writing, let us study the intrepid faith it is not only crucial to defeating the devil king of the sixth heaven, but is also the essence of the shared commitment of mentor and disciple. Okay, everybody's ready? Mm -hmm. All right, before I start reading the actual lecture on, rather that was like an introduction, I want you to all skip over to page uh, 180. Okay. And I'm, I, there are just a few, because we never stop to read the little numbers, the little footnotes, right? And there have been great boxes that gave great big overviews, okay? What I'm going to do is now go to the notes and just pick out the ones that are going to be germane for a clear understanding to understand the lecture, okay? So I say, we've already mentioned a sage here indicates Bodhisattva, when we read, we were talking about the Gosho a minute ago. A sage here indicates Bodhisattva superior practices whom Shakyamuni Buddha entrusted with the mission of propagating the mystic law in the latter day of law, as stated, this number four, pardon me, as stated in the supernatural, uh, supernatural Powers chapter of the Lotus Sutra. In several writings, Nichiren refers to himself in humble terms as the forerunner of Bodhisattva superior practices. Okay? Skip to number six. The three obstacles and four devils. I know you all know this, but there might be somebody that doesn't that's watching the video. Various obstacles and hindrances to the practice of Buddhism. They are listed in the Nirvana Sutra and Nagarjuna's the treatise on the great perfection of wisdom. The three obstacles are the obstacle of earthly desires or obstacles arising from the three poisons of greed, uh, anger, and foolishness. Two, the obstacle of karma, obstacles due to bad karma created by committing any of the five cardinal sins or ten evil acts. And three, the obstacle of retribution, obstacles caused by the negative karmic effects of actions in the three evil paths, the realm of hell, hungry spirits, and animals. The four devils are, one, the hindrance of the five components, obstructions caused by one's physical and mental functions. Two, the hindrance of earthly desires, obstructions arising from the three poisons. Three, the hindrance of death, 
meaning one's own untimely death obstructing one's practice of Buddhism or the premature death of another practitioner causing one to doubt. And four, the hindrance of the devil king of the sixth heaven who is said to assume various forms or take possession of others in order to cause people to discard their Buddhist practice. This hindrance is regarded as the most difficult to overcome. Uh, skipping over to number 11, pre-sado and post-sado, a reference to the teachings and writings of Nichiren before and after the Tatsunakuchi persecution and his subsequent exile to Sado Island. The Tatsunakuchi persecution took place on sept September 12, 1271, and his exile lasted two and a half years from October 1271 through March 1274. Before Tatsunakuchi, Nichiren spread the invocation or Daimoku of Namyoho Rengekyo, but did not mention anything about the object of devotion known as the Gohonzon or about the three great secret laws. After Tatsunakuchi, however, he revealed the object of, of devotion in terms of both the person and the law. He implicitly revealed his identity as the Buddha of the latter day of the law, person in the opening of the eyes and the object of devotion in his teachings, the law, in the object of devotion for observing the mind. Notice that he says he implicitly, do you understand? Mm -hmm. Not explicitly. Uh, he completed both works during his exile. He referred to the three great secret laws as the three important matters of the lifespan chapter of the essential teaching of Lotus Sutra in his 1272 letter entitled Earthly Desires or Enlightenment, his earliest reference to the three great secret laws in his extant writings. And I've already told you many times, it's the Gohonza of the three great secret laws, mm -hmm. right? Okay, the person, number 12, the person in the law, Nimpo Ika. Nichiren revealed and spread the law of nam myoho and inscribed it, and inscribed it in the form of a mandala known as the Gohonza in order to enable all people in the latter day of the law to reveal their inherent Buddhahood. For this reason, he, regarded, he is regarded as the Buddha of the latter day of the law. The Gohonzon is the object of devotion in terms of the law or the physical embodiment of the eternal and, intris and, and intrinsic law of nam myoho Rengekyo that Nichiren realized and manifested within his own life. Hence, Nichiren Daishonin is the object of devotion in terms of the person. Nichikan, the 26th high priest, established the principle of the oneness of the person law, indicating that the object of devotion in terms of the person and the object of devotion in terms of the law are one in essence. In other words, the law is inseparable from the person and vice versa. That's why he's referring to himself in the Angi Kuden in the orally transmitted teachings as the Nam Yoho Rengekyo, thus come one. Okay, which wouldn't possibly be Shakyamuni, frankly speaking. Okay, 13, casting off the transient and revealing the true. Revealing one's true status as a Buddha, because what is your original state? Buddha. Buddhahood. Buddha. Mm -hmm. And setting aside that, uh, 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 and setting aside that Buddha's provisional or transient identity, okay? That would be your own. Mm. You understand? Mm. Here it refers to Nichiren at the time of the Tatsunakuchi persecution as it reveals to his casting off the transient and revealing the true and discarding his transient status as an ordinary pe person at the stage of hearing the name and the words of the truth and revealing his true identity as the Buddha of limitless joy who has been enlightened from time without beginning while remaining an ordinary person. Okay, skip over to point number 19, the principle of prolonging one's life through faith. This is based on the passage, it's page 181, still in the notes. The principle of prolonging one's life through faith. This is based on the passage in the lifespan chapter of the Lotus Sutra that reads, we beg you to cure us and let us live out our lives. This is the section that explains the parable of the outstanding physician who gives good medicine to his children who have drunk poison, that is succumbed to delusion, who and who implore him to cure their illness. Through taking this good medicine, that is embracing faith in the wonderful law of the Lotus Sutra, Nam Myoho Rengekyo, they are cured and can enjoy many more years of life. Fundamental darkness, also fundamental ignorance, uh, number 20, or primal ignorance, the inability to recognize the truth, particularly the true nature of one's life. Nietzsche interprets fundamental darkness as ignorance. As I said, anytime you see ignorance, you know they're talking about fundamental darkness. Uh, fundamental darkness as ignorance of the ultimate law or ignorance of the fact that one's life is 
essentially a manifestation of the law, which he identifies as nam myoho rengekyo Okay, you are nam myoho rengekyo exactly as you are. Three great secret laws, number 21, the core principles of Nichiren Buddhism, the core principles of Nichiren Buddhism, the object of devotion, the invocation or daimoku, two, of nam myoho rengekyo and three, the sanctuary or the place where one chants the daimoku before the object of devotion, and it says C footnote 11 for a detailed explanation. And that's, I already read that to you um, from pre Sado and uh, post Sado. Um, through faith, not through, pardon me, uh, uh, pardon me, through, substituting faith for wisdom. The principle that faith is the true cause for attaining supreme wisdom and faith alone sta leads to enlightenment. Everybody understands that, right? Mm -hmm. In general, Buddhism describes supreme wisdom as the cause of enlightenment. According to the Lotus Sutra, however, even Shariputra, who among the Buddha's ten disciples was revered as foremost in wisdom, could attain enlightenment only through faith, not through wisdom. Okay. Uh, pardon me. I'm not going to talk too much about Sen Mibo. I already have before. You know he screwed up. Uh, number 35. Nitrin states, despite the personal interference of the devil king of the sixth heaven, it is because the heavenly deities came to my aid that I survived even the Tatsunakuchi persecution and emerged safely from other great persecutions. By now, the devil king must be thoroughly discouraged. Even after my death, his surviving minions may arouse their armies, but they will not be able to succeed in defeating my followers. This is because the minions of the devil king of the sixth heaven have become the 4,994,828 people of Japan who now, for the most part, have yielded to Nichiren. So do you understand that, though? What he's basically saying there? The devil king of the sixth heaven will never be able to defeat, they will, ne will never be able to succeed in defeating my followers, my true followers, those that take the same vow as I have. Okay, that's what he's clarifying there. And then the object of devotion in terms of the person is revealed in the opening of uh, number 37 of the eyes composed by Nietzsche and Asado in February 1272. In it, he clarifies that he is the Buddha of the latter day of the law who possesses the three virtues of sovereign teacher and parent and who will lead the people of the latter day to enlightenment. And then in the Angikudin says that it's also us. The object of devotion in terms of the law, meanwhile, is revealed in the object of devotion for observing the mind composed on Sato in April 1273. Nitrin clarifies that nam myoho is the fundamental law for attaining Buddhahood that all people of the latter, uh, of the latter day should revere. And then, number 38, very important, because you're going to see in many goshas when he reveres Shakyamuni as the Lord of Teachings. Mm -hmm. And that's because all of the Buddhist scriptures before his advent have all referred to Shakyamuni in this way. So it would be completely an abrupt disconnect if he didn't constantly reinforce that. But again, in his true teaching, the object of, pardon me, the Lord of Teachings of the Latter Day of the Law, also Teacher of the Latter Day of the Law, the person who in the time of the Latter Day of the Law, an evil age 2,000 years after Shakyamuni's passing, when Shakyamuni's teaching loses its power to benefit people, instructs and guides people through propagating nam myoho Rengekyo, which is the essence of the Lotus Sutra in accord with the Sutra's predictions. And what does he, who does he say the, the, the Lord of Teachings of the Latter Day of the Law is in the Angikud, in the Orally Transmitted Teachings? He says, Nichiren and his followers are the true Lord of Teachings for the Latter Day. Okay, because we all do that. He initiated it, but there's no difference between his life and our own. And so, having gotten that background information done today, tonight, uh, we'll continue with the lecture and read it in its entirety next week, starting on page 168. Okay. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. See you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.